Welcome to the With Pride and Grit podcast, a show dedicated to helping you navigate a season of transition in your life. I'm your host, Jen Pasquale, and as a 16-year military spouse, I know firsthand how challenging life's transitions can be. I also know it's an opportunity for growth, discovery, and new beginnings. In this season of With Pride and Grit, we're sharing stories of military spouses who are or have successfully transitioned to civilian life. We'll also hear from experts who can offer valuable insights about transition resources available to support a spouse's journey. Whether you're just starting the transition process or already well on your way, this podcast is for you. We hope to provide you with the knowledge and inspiration to make the most of this new chapter in your life. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of With Pride and Grit. And today we are going to spend some time with Leslie Coffey, who is over at American Corporate Partners, which is definitely a favorite of ours. So I'm looking forward to you hearing a little bit more from Leslie about what American Corporate Partners does and how it can support you as a military spouse. Leslie, thank you for joining us. We're happy to have you today. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Jen. I love what you're doing. Love your mission. Thanks. <laughs> together and really for the invitation. Now, happy, happy to hear all the things because I sometimes I think when you're in this space, you think everybody knows about all the things that you've been exposed to in terms of resources. And, and yet I find a lot of folks who don't really know what ACP does. So we're going to get into all of that. But why don't you start by just telling everyone a little bit about how you came to know and fall in love with the ACP mission and what that is all about for you personally? Yeah, you bet. Well, um, you know, If I go back from where I am today, I'm currently the VP of military engagement for ACP, but really my journey with ACP starts years and years ago. I've been in the transition space for almost 15 years now. And back in 20, let's see, I'm thinking all my military spouse years, 15, I was running the largest transition center globally, which is at Fort Hood. And I used to give out ACP flyers all the time. I was like, who would pass this up? This is like the rich uncle you never knew you had. And it was not available for spouses. So I would hand it out and I would just tell everybody. When we moved, the Army called, of course, we moved to the National Training Center in Fort Irwin, California. And I was no longer in that position. So I actually reached out to ACP and had them mail flyers to my home so that I could give them out to those that I came in touch with. While I was there at the National Training Center, they launched for military spouses. So they got a special uh, funding and a special grant. And so I put a countdown app on my phone because I wanted to be one of the first to apply. Because I I mean, I'd seen the results. So uh, November 11, 2018, I was one of the first military spouses to apply. And the result of my mentorship from the middle of the Mojave Desert, when remote work wasn't big, was a 67% increase in pain. I kept evangelizing it and a couple of years went past. And then the executive director reached out to me and said, basically, hey, you've always been spreading the word. How about we just make it official? <laughs> and so my role is essentially to be the obnoxious soccer mom on the mountaintop with the megaphone spreading the word. And so tell us a little bit about, so if someone doesn't know anything about what ACP does and hasn't yet come in contact with you, give us the, um, the abridged version of, from your perspective, what is really the value of ACP's mission as it relates specifically to spouses? So what we do is it's a one-to-one customized mentorship and it's completely free and it's based because it's customized. It's completely based off that person's unique journey and their interest and their goals. So everything, everybody's season of life is different. Everyone's journey is different. And so that's why we take great care into customizing it. And our, to go about finding a mentor, so it's one mentor to one spouse for a year, up to a year. Um, and we, it's a very human-driven process. So we actually have a staff that does a lot of research to identify based on your goals when we get you on the phone who would be a great fit for you. And then we provide you like their bio, kind of like a baseball card, an introduction, and then you let us know if you think it's a great fit or not, or if you want us to keep looking. If we miss the mark, we happy to go back to the drawing board because it happens. But I'm really proud that 
97% would refer us to another veteran or military spouse. Of course, me being one of them. <laughs> and so okay, so walk me through a little bit behind the scenes as a spouse. If I were to apply and be paired with a mentor, what does that relationship look like? Is that something that I'm in charge of? Is that a, a kind of a dictated structure? How does that work from the inside? Yeah, that's a great question. So step one, once someone applies on our website, then we're going to reach out and ask to get on the call with them because we want to hear really what you're wanting from the mentorship. And then also you can let us know I'm interested in the same gender or a different gender, same ethnic background, whatever it is. And um, that will help us when we're searching for you because everything we do is human driven. There's no AI involved. So um, once, you know, let's say that we present somebody to you and you say, like I did, yes, how fast can I talk to her? <laughs> I was like, all caps, yes. Then, the, then we will make the introduction and you look about scheduling the first call. It can be voice, it can be video, whatever your comfort level is. And then like my spouse is currently in it and he meets every two weeks with his. So it's really your cadence, depending on what you're working on. Okay. And we will check in with you in two weeks and see if it, if you think it's going to be a good fit. And then after that, we check in every month and typically, you know, it's based off of what you're looking to accomplish. So I would say the ownership is on the spouse. However, the mentors are great accountability partners. And if they they might assign you something to work on until the next meeting, it all depends on if you're working to land a position, if you're working on professional development, if you're working to open a business, whatever you're working on, then that will really kind of dictate what you do from month to month. But our request is at least one hour a month. Again, everybody's cadence is different. Some people meet all the time. Some people become fast friends and, you know, they're texting. So it really just depends on the unique matchup of the pair. And I'm still in touch with my mentor five years later. Oh, that's awesome. You mentioned up to a year. Talk to me a little bit about that kind of up to, is it, is it need to be a year? Is it on average a full year for everyone? Or is, is there a great bit of flexibility there? I'd say normally we typically see like at least nine months. Some people tend to say we've met all of our goals by then. But again, for example, even if you're working to land a job and you land at a great position in month two, we still recommend staying in touch because they can help you to integrate well, can really help you to crush that first year, make great impressions. And then also when it's time for performance review or asking for a raise, maybe you don't have a lot of experience in that and a mentor can help you with that. So even if your goal is to get a position, we still recommend staying in touch as you integrate. And I'll tell you, we, we had a spouse that, did just that. She landed a position within two months of her mentor. And she would, she had been unemployed for five years because she was a caretaker for her littles. First position was 76,000. She stayed with her mentor and four months later, she got another position for 107,000. So that's another great reason to stay with the mentor and explore other opportunities. <laughs> Well, and I, I think it raises a really interesting point about the the goals that someone might have inside that mentorship relationship could, you know, could change. Initially, it's helping, maybe it's helping someone re-enter the workforce or pivot into a different career field, but then it could be, okay, how do you advocate for yourself within your organization? Or how can you grow your own skill set to be able to be ready for that, like that next level or that promotion. Or I think for some of us spouses, we may not necessarily have practice at some of those things that happen inside an organization if that's new for us. So having someone to right. tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, <laughs> here's how this works on the inside. Here's what you should consider doing. Do you find that's one of the benefits that spouses have with these relationships? Absolutely. So it's really having a, sound, a safe sounding board. So these mentors volunteer and they only have one person to focus on. So they only have you and they're volunteering to see you succeed. You know, that's the whole reason. A lot of them are not military connected about 75% or not. 
they are not veterans or they're not military connected. And so this is their way to, to do more than say, thank you for your service. This is their way to give back. It's gratitude and action. So it's very fulfilling for them. Like they get more out of it. Sometimes they're the projects, they love it, but to have somebody that's vested in you wants to see you succeed and is outside of the organization. So it can give you some unbiased perspective on things is super, super helpful. Yeah, no, I could see that. I was thinking about spouses who might, who maybe they're not in a job season, right? They aren't necessarily actively looking for employment, but they do want to just grow as an individual and start to think about some of those things. Do you find that those are good fits for mentorships as well? Or is it really more for folks who are trying to enter their workforce in some capacity? So what we have found on the spouse side is pretty unique compared to the veteran side. And so often I tell you, it's the confidence. 29% coming in to our program are confident in their career path and their journey. Leaving after working with a mentor, it jumps up to 87%. Oh, wow. So they're just not understanding their value. So you can you, perhaps work as a couple of years away, you can do the right things and put the right stepping stones in place for when the time is right. And also if you're planning to go to school or seek out some type of certification, because the mentors are in that career path, they can tell you what's going to make you most marketable, what's most in demand so that you're not wasting your time. I will tell you that's one way that I messed up a little bit. I messed up a lot of ways in my mentorship, but one way I messed up is that she told me, don't waste your time with us or you you know, it's not a good fit for you. It was all the buzz and I thought I needed it. So I was pursuing it and spending a lot of time on it. And then we actually got, of course, three weeks notification to move coast to coast in the middle of it. We PCS and it was the middle of the school year and I had three kids to get into a different school. So anyhow, I, w- I missed my window to even try to compete for that cert. So I put all this front load of work into studying and all the things. And then it ended up being a waste, which she told me it would be. So <laughs> it's kind of like mom. I didn't listen. I had to learn the hard way. That's typical. <laughs> oh, that's, it's, a, it's a good story though, because sometimes we can't, when we're even in the thick of it, sometimes it's hard to see those things. So it's good to have, again, someone to tap you on the shoulder. I'm curious what your experience has been, because I've run into a a couple of folks that I've known who've been considering ACP and they've had some sort of myths that they had about the process and about the engagement. And so I was curious if there's any, you know, things in particular that you have found in talking to spouses that kind of holds them back from going ahead and applying. Oh my goodness. So one, I just had a friend text me that I've known for years that just applied this week. And obviously she's known me. I'm like, that's how hard spouses are to get some time. So let me share another way that I failed and this will correlate with some others because I see this all the time. My mentor is on the Forbes coach council. She's a global executive for sales from Microsoft. She has staff at six center. Like she's been at Microsoft She was there for 30 years. So Mm -hmm. she grew up hard, you know, as a woman in tech all Mm -hmm. those years ago. Three time breast cancer, however. She lost her twin sister to breast cancer. So tough as nails. Her face has been on Times Square. And so for me, as a mill spouse in the middle of the desert, I'm like, what do I have to bring to this conversation? Mm -hmm. Like, I felt, I didn't feel worthy of her time. I'm going to be wasting her time. I don't have anything concrete to bring. And I will tell you, it took, and I, what did I do? I postponed the conversations. I'd reflect, I'd push it back I'd push it to the right because I didn't get out of my own way and not, and I felt so unworthy of somebody pouring into me. I was so used to just doing for others and pouring into others to have somebody pour into you and be vulnerable is super awkward for me. It was like, but once I got out of my own way. So I think it's giving that permission, one permission to focus on your own professional mm-hmm. journey. And two yeah. permission to be important to you that you are worth it, that you matter, you're worth it. And you're not wasting anybody's time. My mentor at the end of the day, I was robbing her of exactly why she was volunteering. Like she was only volunteering <laughs> to help. A spouse is you really mm-hmm. focus on. And 
because I was reluctant, I was actually robbing her of that opportunity to provide gratitude and action. Well, that's such um, an interesting perspective. Like it, again, I, it took me a while to recognize that, that, you know, to come at it from that angle, but that's honestly mm -hmm. exactly what I was doing, but I had to get out of my own way. And so I see that for so many spouses that say, you always put family first, the kids first, the mission first, the how everything first before you pets, like you put everything first before <laughs> you, and it's okay. <laughs> A, to be unapologetic, to pursue mm -hmm. your own goals. It's okay to, you know, to deposit into your own bank. And this is a great way to do it. Yeah. No, I think we are unfortunately exceedingly good at self-selecting out of opportunities, yeah. out of, you know, access to resources, out of things because, because we're in our own head sometimes. And just anecdotally, I'll, I'll share that. I remember feeling the same. It was like, I don't really know what I'm bringing to this conversation. And I would go into it going, I have nothing to talk about. Like, I'm just over here doing my thing. I don't really know what we're going to talk about. And yet every time at the end of that hour, I would, you know, she would point out something and we would have a good, a valuable conversation. And I would always leave it energized and I would always leave it, you know, a little bit lifted and yet I didn't have a plan going in. And so sometimes it's, I think it's also being willing to just not know what the outcome's going to be, but just give into the process and give into the idea that sometimes we just have to go with it and not have it planned and just trust it. And that was certainly my experience, but I, but it held me back too. So very similar to what you're saying. And, you know, you have, everybody that comes to our program has a point of contact to ACP and know that there's a handbook too, that's kind of like conversation starters, or if you're like, I have no idea, you cannot over communicate with your ACP point of contact. Like I promise you the whole staff, a lot of our staff are spouses, like 30% mm -hmm. are spouses. So the whole staff wants nothing more than to see you succeed too, right? So just let us know, that's, that's the thing. Let us know I feel awkward or you know, uh, I don't know what to say. And then let's start here because we've been doing this for 15 years. So we've got, yes, 2008 is when we started. I and, no more than, and more than 27,000 have come through. Oh my gosh. I, I truly did not know it was, I mean, it was, had that kind of longevity. That's incredible. Ben <laughs> spouses opened when again, what year was that? 2018. 2018. Okay. okay. And so from a spouse perspective, in terms of audience, just so we can be clear with everyone. So I know active duty spouses, absolutely. What is the kind of the line, if you will, around veteran spouses always wonder, is this something I can take part of? And, right. and is there a deadline post-transition? for spouses who maybe are divorced or separated, like just walk me through the spouse audience to be sure folks are clear if it's available to them. So we did have to go and fight for a, spe a special grant to support the spouse program. And so the parameters of the grant are of course, active duty, uh, surviving spouses, okay. spouses of disabled post 9-11 veterans, anybody with their service member served 180 days post 9-11, they're eligible. So even if they, because the way our application works, it will ask, what is your current spouse status? Are you active duty, gold star or surviving? Are you a disabled post 9-11 veteran spouse? And then you can select one of those. Okay, perfect. No, that's super clear. I appreciate that. And then in terms of just helping folks know how to like, how to find you and the best way to get access, I, um, I, in terms of getting to the application, I know there's the ACP slash USA.org is the best place. And then just filling out the spouse app from there. Is that usually what you advise folks to do? Yes. Yes. ACP-USA.org. If you just want to explore the website, you can find lots of interesting information on there. But once you apply, you're going to hear from us within a day. Now, I will say the trick is because we're a .org and a nonprofit, for Gmail and Yahoo will land in spam and promotion sometimes. So I promise you're going to hear from us within a day. If you don't check spam, check promotions or reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll go on the hunt for you, but just know that it happens. There's something we can do about it. that's just how Gmail categorizes things. Yeah. They just, they just put it there. 
no, it's just good for folks to know. So they, you know, because sometimes I don't dig through that as much as I should. So it's good to know to look for it. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. How agile the organization is in terms of its ability to respond to needs and communicate, you know, often is one of the things that I definitely appreciated. I never felt like, you know, anybody had forgotten about me or, or that I was bothering anyone. I think there's that, oh, I need to have this question, but I don't want to ask it or whatever. But the folks that I've had helping me have always been just really, just really welcoming. And, and it's very clear that they just, they want to help me meet my goals, whatever those might be. And I think we kind of talked around it a little bit, but I think this part about the fact that it really can be for anyone. So you even mentioned if you're starting a business or if you think you might want to start a business and you want to, or you think you might want to start a nonprofit, like whatever it is you think you might want to do, this can also serve as an information gathering a mechanism for you to just understand what is it like inside that world? And do I really want to be doing that and have a resource for you already built in if and when you decide to actually go that route? Um, yeah. And if you're to go into academia, higher ed, if you're going, if social work, mm -hmm. healthcare, it doesn't matter the industry. We just had a spouse not too long ago that wanted to be a zoologist and we had to go on the hunt for her to find an experienced zoologist. It's just learning from somebody years ahead of you in the space you're looking to get into regardless of the space. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I have a couple kind of like just what I call lightning round sort of rapid fire questions. I'd love to just ask you and just get your like quick one answer, quick word answer to some of these, sure. if you're willing. <laughs> of course. So I would love to know from your perspective, because you're working with civilians and, and military spouses, what is one thing you wish civilians knew about military spouses? Well, their loyalty, reliability, resourcefulness, and <laughs> we just make it happen, to be honest with you. So I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example. I was the first remote military spouse for ACP. It took a little bit of time, but over time, I was able to convince them to bring on more military spouses. Like it took about 15 months. So we started hiring for mili remote military spouses. And anyhow, fast forward now, four out of the last five months, employees of the month have been military spouses. So I don't say anything. I just prove it every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it brings you an immense amount of happiness. <laughs> just uh, do that. Yeah, yeah, they just... I love them to death. They're so phenomenal. Like their heart is and just dedicated because it's their community. And a lot of them are actually alumni themselves, just like me, but they just get such joy to see the transformation and the journey along the way and get to see what, how these relationships take off. They just love it. So yeah, as a matter of fact, you know, we have more that are already accepted and they're starting soon. So that, that percentage is just growing. Yep. No, I, and it's funny. I, the, 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 you are the second person I've talked to this week working with an organization that is really turning the tide within the, their own organization around military spouse employment and flexibility and bringing more and more spouses into the fold. So I love hearing that. Um, something else I was curious about is just the, if you were thinking from a mentor perspective, what is the one piece of advice, the absolute, if you could only have walked away with one thing from your mentor relationship, what is the one piece of advice that you feel like just changed everything for you? For me, from what yeah. my mentor shared with me, yep. power in your... the word no. Power in the word no. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. It is a complete sentence. <laughs> nope. And I think, you know, in the military spouse world in particular, sometimes I think because we are doing so much and involved in so many things and we're shouldering so much, no can be a little harder to get to and learning how to have that accessible is really great advice. So I love that was part of your uh, kind of your benefits from your mentor relationship. Anything else you want to share, Leslie, before we wrap up this segment on resources for transition? Yeah, probably what I should share is that if for some reason that you're paired with somebody and it's not the right fit, again, you can't over communicate. Let that point of contact to ACP know there's a reason that we don't just pair you and forget about you. Like we're there every step of the way as well. Like it is, let us know. Like, or if you change your mind, you're four months in, you're like, maybe that HR is not what I was thinking it is. Maybe mm -hmm. I want to go this route. 
We're not going to make you stay with the HR person if you want to go a different route. Just communicate that. And then we have events twice a week live on LinkedIn and Facebook where we have 125 partner companies. So if you want to know what it's like to work in any of those companies and how to get hired, how to get noticed, how to stand out as an applicant, they, they're, they're going to tell you everything. And all of those events are archived on our website. So if you just want to do some research, like we've done the informational interview and ask awkward questions for you. You just got to push play. Yep. Now that's a great way to end because sometimes if we're not quite ready to say yes, we can use ACP to just help us increase our knowledge set and just gain comfort with what it would be like to be connected to the organization. So I think those webinars are a great place for folks to start and they're all free, you know, which is awesome. That's right. Um, That's right. Thank you for spending some time with us and walking us through what ACP has to offer and specifically what it has to offer military spouses, which is, of course, our focus for these resources that we're highlighting. So thank you, Leslie. I'm sure we'll see you again. I appreciate the invite. I love it. Thanks so much. Absolutely. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the With Pride and Grip podcast. We're so grateful to our guests for sharing their stories and expertise with us. And we're grateful to you, our listeners, for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And we always appreciate you sharing us with a friend or leaving a kind review. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us on social media under at Pride and Grit or on our website, prideandgrit.com. Until next time, please remember you're not alone on this journey and it is our privilege to walk alongside you.